before we get started, uh, do you mind if I ask you one or two questions? That sort of help me uh, calibrate the interview properly. Uh, okay. I yeah, don't have uh, any questions. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. Mainly the question is around like, have you any? Do you have any interviews lined up? And which company? How long? Basically, from now and. Um, is there anything specific that you're looking from this in, uh, interview practice? So yeah, so um, so I will have an interview, a formal interview in coming weeks. So before that, I want to have some practice. So as the what's the content of practice? I think mostly on the algorithm, but uh, what whatever is related. Uh, uh, to the interview process, I'm just glad to, to practice and uh, uh, let someone else to help me. Okay, got it. Uh, can I ask which company the interview is for? So I'm going to interview for Manta. Okay. And um, yeah. At E6. Uh, I just senior engineer, so. Um, okay, E5. I, okay, got it. Sure. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, so the normal, so uh, in the spirit of full disclosure, I am a advisor at Amazon, so the process may not be exactly the same. Most okay. of the things, in my opinion, will be the same. How they ask mm -hmm. questions, what they judge. Now for uh, so basically E3 and E4, that's the one and two levels. I think mm -hmm. uh, the questions have the same more or less judgment criteria. E3 has almost like if you solve the question, you're done. E4 is the modularity should be reasonably okay. Uh, you should also be able to solve the question and nomenclature should be okay, not using I, J, K variables. At E5, it does go a little bit up because at Amazon, when you, like we call E5 L6 here. So at L6, it does go a little bit up. They do look mm -hmm. at all of these. They are definitely have to be there. Nomenclature, etc., should be there. They also okay. look at a few other things in a sense mm -hmm. that how you solve the question and the follow ups are definitely there because they'll change the same question and ask a few different mm -hmm. follow ups. So we'll okay. talk about that at the end of the interview. So, how mm -hmm. I want to uh, frame this interview is we'll start uh, in the next minute or so, go through mm -hmm. a coding problem in the next 15 minutes. Okay. Spend the last five to ten minutes discussing mm -hmm. some of the salient points of the feedback that I have. Obviously, I will mm -hmm. be writing a detailed feedback at the end of this. I think we both get a chance to write it. So, okay. we're writing that. And then you can ask me any questions you have, anything like that. Make sense? Okay. Makes sense. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Without further ado, I'll paste a question. Uh, which okay. language is your preference? So I'm going to use the go long for most of the questions. Yeah. Go. Okay. So I've pasted if you can see it. Yes, I can see the screen. Yeah. Okay. I'll paste a question here. Uh -huh. Can you see it? Yeah, I can see it. Uh, it's called find the number of unique yeah. shapes inside the yeah. of mesh. Uh, okay. So, okay, now let me read this question and try sure. to understand. Yeah. Uh, example, the total number of unique shape is, uh, is two or minus two. Uh, is two? Uh, it's two, right? The unique shape is two. Uh, okay, it's shapes. Okay, so you previously please tell contain this clip. So we can do once. Feel free to ask me any clarifying questions. Anything you have yeah, in mind? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So yeah. For my uh, so the answer tell uh, the description to tell me the sh number of shapes is two, right? Which means, for my understanding, the definition of shapes is uh, it's just the. Uh, how yeah, it's just the shapes. So uh, according to the definition, so there is a two shapes means there is a two one, a red horizontally, uh, vertically or horizontally. So so um yeah, uh, 
as long as these two shapes can be totally overlapped, we can regard that's the same shape. Is my understanding correct? Correct. So yeah. Okay. okay let me ask okay. you one question. How many uh, total shapes do you think there are in this grid? Not unique, just total. Uh, total shapes. Uh, is it's four. So yeah, my for my understanding, there are four shapes. Uh, okay. Unical shape. So, so, so okay. Uh, so, so, there are so, three. We do connect the diagonals. So, the first thing that you see in line 18, 18 has then connected to column 2, which goes down to 19, column 2, which comes down to 20, column 1. So, they are connected. Diagonals are connected. So, that's only one whole shape. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay, I see. So all the numbers one, as long as they are connected, uh, vertically, horizontally, or diagonally, di di they are considered as a one shape. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So let's say if one, so if, if one shape is turned to ninety degrees or one hundred eighty degrees, does that it consider to another shape? Excellent point. So rotation, assume for a minute, is not part of the equation. We'll discuss rotation later. But for the minute, for the minute, assume rotation is not part of the equation. So it has to exactly fit. No 90 degree turn, no 180 degree turn, no 270 degree. It has to fit okay. as it is. Okay. 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 Um, so far, I think I understand the questions. The connected one. And okay, rotation is considered as a different shapes. Okay, I think I understand these questions. Okay, let me think about uh, how to solve sure. it. Sure, okay. take a few minutes to think about it, then we'll discuss it. If we both agree on the approach, then you'll call it out. Okay, so yeah, to be honest, I never. Uh, excuse me? Yeah, yeah, sorry, you said something? Yeah, so the screen is changed to a blackboard, uh, changed to a whiteboard. Oh, okay. So uh, at the bottom left, I think you clicked on a toggle whiteboard. Click it again, it should go away. You'll okay. come back to that. Oh, I see. I see. Oh, God. Okay. To be honest, uh, I never encountered this problem before. So the first problem is how to represent the shapes. Um. Okay. Um. How to represent the shapes? How to express the shapes? Um, okay, so let's think about how to break down the problem first. So, how would you break down the whole problem? So yes. Yeah, so the first question is um, how to gather the one the position of one shapes. How to exhaust the the position of one shapes. Um yeah, so the idea in my mind is uh, just collect all the po po position of uh, connected um, connected uh, positions such as uh, for the for can you see my cursor? So yeah, yeah, I can see it. Okay, okay. So let's say for this shape, so I will. Uh, uh, save the position of this one and this one and then this one and this one and this one. So I have a uh, uh, array so which contains all the po position of this point. So yeah. So then, when you say partition, what exactly does it mean? Position means the index, the index of x and y. Okay, so you yeah. uh, okay position. So, okay, you say the coordinates. Yeah, coordinate. Yeah. Okay, so, got it. So, so for this one, we will have. So for this one, we have uh, one zero. Got it. I think I got it. Yeah. Yeah. Understood. Then. Yeah. So. <clears throat> this yeah. sounds reasonable. Yeah. So. Then we have one one, 
and then okay you need to write everything i understand the point you're making okay okay so let's say uh uh so, so we have um, identified the shapes now the point is to deduplicate them correct yeah to de deduplicate them so okay uh how to deduplicate them so yeah so um first we so let's let's uh, try to guess um, so let's start with the left top uh positions uh coordinate um so we can um let's say we if we want to uh go through all the shapes using the dfs so okay. so for the first one we record the relative um coordinate as a zero and the, the second one we we record it as a one and a zero because it move right so for the x exit we just move right one step and it okay and the and the, the third one we so relative to this one uh we can take the relative position to the first one so it will be one one um that makes sense okay for the third one yeah so uh, for the four first one is it zero um comma two. two yeah yeah and also as well zero plus three okay so that's okay. how you're uh, going to the shape Got yeah it. So, okay so let's say if uh, the shape is like this um we need a, a constant order of the dfs so we will go like this um uh, can you see my cursor so yeah, we will yeah. go right down down and 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 this one this one and then the right one so we'll so um to do that we need the, to have a consistent uh, uh direction to iterate we will have the um okay down okay. left uh up right okay so can i suggest have... something okay sure uh i understand what you're doing you're basically mm -hmm. using dfs to uh DFS. change the coordinates mm -hmm. how about we get all the existing coordinates let's assume we have all the existing coordinates as it is then uh Mm -hmm. Can we change them to this relative format with just one quick change? Let's assume we have all the existing coordinates. Four. Is there a way we can change the first line into the second once we get all the exact coordinates with like not changing them in the DFS? You are right. You could change in the change them in the DFS, or could we do something after getting all of them? After we getting all of them, uh, can we do something? Uh... We get Convert the... line 23 into 24. Do you think there is mm -hmm. something we could do? Mm -hmm. 
basically we are trying to um, re-reference the entire shape around mm -hmm. the origin point right yes 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 so in normal re-referencing in a basic cartesian plane re-referencing what do we do we consider the main point as origin right mm -hmm. yeah. yeah and then so we just uh, minus them right yes okay minus them uh, okay so let's have yeah either way we come up with line number 24 then what do we do we have come up with line number 24 what's the next step then either through dfs or through just subtracting the origin point. Uh -huh. Okay. We have come to line yeah. order. What's next? Uh, so what next is uh, we just uh, iterate. Why is this talking there? Yeah, we just, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. So we just uh, go through the star with the each node which has the number one. We collect all the points. Uh, we have with this uh, uh, this shape, and we group them and uh, debug them. So yeah, so we can convert this as a string or whatever as a key. So uh, if we find a, a du uh, duplicated key, so we can regard their uh, same shape. So then we just count. The how many numbers are in this hash map? Um, then we can okay. figure out. Got it. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, two questions here. You were mm -hmm. using DFS, right? Yes. Why DFS? Why not BFS? Um. <sighs> So for BFS, I think it can. Uh, so for 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 the BFS, it just provide a consistent order to iterate all the neighborhood. For the BFS, um, for the BFS, it also can be done as well, I think. As long as we use the consistent order to visit all the neighborhood, so we start with one, then we have these two. Okay. Yeah. So then what's the we... okay cool? Yeah. So what's the time complexity? So for the time complexity, um, I think it it just goes through. It it just visit every node of these matrix so the final uh so this should be zero so the final time complexity should be equal to the node of this matrix it's all m times n so whatever this metric is um yeah, yeah, yeah. and what about the space complexity yeah space complexity um is also um, yeah it's also all in so yeah we just uh it's also sorry what it's also what is also all in n is equals the number of these uh matrix uh, yeah so assume it's an n cross m matrix yeah yeah then how would you define the space and time complexities? So the time complexity, time complexity. 
equals all um, times n. And the space is also the same because, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, it's the same. I think it's the same. It's same because? It's the same because of we, uh, so we save our shapes. Um, so the numbers of these shapes, the sum, the number of the coordinate is equals uh, to the numbers of the the matrix, the 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 points in the matrix. Okay. And um, yeah. So can you write yeah. it like space complexity is? Young. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let me write it. So. Sorry, one quick thing before you move on. Like you haven't finished the space complexity, so it's O of M. Yes, no, no, times n, yeah, it's same, yeah. Times yeah. N. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, sorry, let's, yeah. Now, please write the code. Assume that you don't have to take any input. It's given to you as a function parameter. The grid is given to you like that. Your only job is to return an integer. Okay, oh, okay, okay. sure. Let me define a function here. So we call it count shapes. So the input is a matrix. And we will return a number. So we're going to do DFS. So let's say, M equals long. Let's assume the size of the matrix is always above than zero. Oh, can I assume that? Okay. Go ahead. Matrix first. Um, for each point. We're going to visit I and J, okay. And so, uh, so we collect, a, let's define. So I'm going to define a function within this function. Um, so just uh, use some feature of closure. I sure. know in some uh, project, uh, this coding style may not be uh, preferred, but if you don't like it, I can just always define this function outside. Okay. That's fine. I don't mind. Okay. Okay. Function. Um, visit. Okay. Um, we have a, a collector called a shape. Okay. So shape. Um, shapes. Okay. The shapes uh, should be a map. Uh, I'm not sure the array, the array cannot be used as a key. So let's convert it to a string. Okay, and um, and this is a count. Okay, okay, um, okay. So so visit i and j. If the matrix I and J equals one, I'm going to visit this one. Okay. So uh, when everything is done, I'm going to return the loss of the shapes. Okay. So let's see how we define this visit function. Okay, um, we start with i, j, 
Okay. Mm, so let's. Uh, um, so okay. So uh, so since we are going to each direction, so the index may be out of border. So let's check the border first. If okay. I is next to or j is to zero or i is great or equals n or j is great or equals n we just return um okay so uh, so since we are going to try the four direction so let's um um okay okay um for at this point it's uh it's a zero we're going to return okay so uh then i'm going to um set this point as zero, so we don't have to visit that again. Okay. Can you do something here? I don't want you to change the original matrix. Let's okay. not change the input. Okay, then we're going to have well visited the map. Okay. Okay, then so it's uh make it as a boolean. Okay. Uh I make it um make it uh boolean matrix along is F. So let's um uh, set all the values of this you can do that later so set all visited visited map as false okay okay uh, to do yeah okay then we'll check if this uh, map is visited. Okay. Visited. I. J. Equals true. Okay. Then. We set it as true. We don't need you to. So that is to force again because we're not going to visit it again. Sure, makes yeah. sense. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, so uh, we're going to visit each neighbor. Okay, so that includes uh, eight directions. Uh, J. Um, okay. I know there's a way to make it this code shorter, but One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Minus one, minus one. Minus one, minus one. One plus one. Minus one. Minus one. Plus one. Okay. So, okay. 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 So, okay, we we get to um, this. So are we um, okay? 
so every time we This is the right of way to define a function. So visit it equals two. Okay. Okay. So every time we encount a value, so yeah. uh, so we need to have uh, uh, we need to have uh, we need to have a pass to collect that. Okay. Okay, we need to have a path to collect that pass. Let's make um array of array. Okay. Um make pass to collect that. So okay, so we start with empty. Okay. Uh, if we included part. Uh, we yes, we include parts, but I'm not sure why there is error promoter right here. Um. Uh, Okay, I'm going to find here, I'm going to find here. Okay, yeah, we need to include the path. Yeah, I'll change that. You focus on using yeah. the path. Yeah. Path equals append. I J. Okay. Okay. Um. Okay. So okay. So um. Um. I think we need to either uh, decide. The path outside of this, because because in Golang there's no way to re return this parameter. So there's two ways. Either so we convert that into a pointer, uh, okay, as a passing, uh, as a pa passing return parameters. So we can do do this. We can do okay, this. so pointers. Yeah. So yeah. So pass equals new. Yeah. So better way is to make that define as a dedicated to the structures. Uh, So okay, so and then every time we will have a pass. Um okay. So then we convert pass to a to a key. Okay. Key. So if um This this map this shape doesn't contain this key. Um, if it is contain this key, so 
just plus plus, or it doesn't matter. So I, um, else. Uh, equals one. So yeah, maybe may this count. Uh, this count doesn't matter because we just need. Makes the, sense. That's fine. Yeah. I think it's fine. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't matter, but it's fine. Yeah. Okay. It should be equals. Okay. So okay. So let me finish this convert method. It's called convert path to key. Convert. Yeah, so that should be quite straightforward. Um, path to your strings. So we just need to return as an as print as. I think this method can do it. Yeah. As print. Yeah, I think this method basically can do it. Okay. Uh, okay. Sorry, so, what does yes. this method do? I'm not overly familiar with sprint F. It's just a generally a two stream method like a Java. It just convert any any object, any array, uh, in a predefined predefined rule. So just con con just expand that is uh, Two dimension array into a string. So okay, yeah, got so it. It, yeah just so we what have we a string now. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. So the. You can convert the exact thing into a string. Yeah. So it's just convert like this. Yeah, but uh, in our case, mm -hmm. take line sixty four. It will convert it in the form of line 64, not 65. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay, yeah, right. So, okay, mm. yeah, okay. Oh, okay, okay, let me think. Uh, um. How to convert this? Uh, how to convert this? Um, how to convert this? Uh, how to, uh, um, we need uh, probably Basically, we just need to re-reference the shape, right? Yeah. So yeah, that yeah. So yeah, we can uh, yeah revisit this shape. So that makes, uh, but that's uh, increase uh, time complexity. I'm thinking about uh, whether I can just add something during uh, du during the first time we did it. So we do not don't 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 need to visit the the shape again. So using the DFS. Yeah. So, so if we have to do it again. What's the problem there? Uh, if I do it again, that increases the time complexity. I just need to do it again. Okay. Will that increase the big O time complexity, or just increase the time in general? It just increases the time in general. So yeah. So but yeah. So the yeah, it's the other. If the big O time complexity is same, why do we care? Okay. Okay, sure, yeah. Um, oh. Okay, 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 um, mm, okay, 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 yeah, so, okay. Um, let's start with, uh, let's say, the first uh, node. I just it call call it first equals pass um, zero. Okay. So um, for the updated pass or just it's a 
re relative path, I just call it R path for short. Um, four, okay. Uh, node, uh, node, okay. Range, pass. Relating node uh, goes so is the node the first node minus first node. First R pass equals append R pass R node. Yeah, I think. Uh, okay, for for all the node in the pass. Okay, so uh, the define a new R road. So it's fine. Okay. Okay. So yeah, yeah. Th thanks for your hint. I uh, think this does this job. Yeah. So yeah, not okay. that complicated. So yeah, if you have to do it in DFS, you might be able to do it. It'd be a little more complicated. We can discuss that later. Mm -hmm. But let's come back to the original thing. Okay. 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 So let's finish this code. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, four. Uh, just uh, let's just copy this code for short. Let me check, go through this. Yeah, uh, go through it. Yeah. Please be checked. So, yeah. so um, start with each node and create a new path. And okay, it's a new path. And convert it to, okay. Start with uh, uh, zero, zero, okay. Until we in count one one shape okay um so if it's zero it's zero it's if it's zero so if it's a widget we just return um and we add a current node into our path um if it's uh, Set it with a true and try the four direction, eight directions, eight directions, eight directions, eight directions, eight directions. Mm, okay. So, looks good. Okay. Yeah, looks good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, looks good to me as well. Okay. Now yeah. let's discuss. So mm -hmm. we have around 10 minutes. Uh, mm -hmm. I'll go over four or five minutes if that's okay with you. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. Then let's take the next segment. Uh, first, let's discuss an extension to this problem. What okay. if rotation was also part of the equation? Sorry? Uh, could you say that again? I said, what if rotation? Uh -huh. was also allowed. So if a rotated image okay. Okay. 
that part you already mentioned that we only have let's only consider 90 degree 180 degree and 270 degree 45 20 these degrees are not really relevant and it's difficult to gauge so let's okay. only discuss these three other rotations how will you handle okay. that we don't okay. need to code anything okay. here let's just discuss okay, okay. so okay um uh so uh so once we get all the passes um <clears throat> uh so i will deduce the path between the each two two shapes uh, as long as the lengths of the the, the node are same i will try to deduce them so the way to consider them identical so far the only way is uh, rotate one of shape into uh, three other uh, di directions um, okay yeah yeah so just rotate one shape into three other directions okay and then um, and then compare with the 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 uh, another shape to see if one of them is identical so yeah just basically yeah go through the old shape compare with each other um yeah so yeah so okay we will um, do this at the end once the entire shapes uh, map is collected then you will go through each shape compare it with all the rest Mm -hmm. uh, yes, uh, yes, uh, yes. So, um, mm, yeah. So I will basically say that just uh, for the part for the past one and the uh, equals range pass. Uh, And the four pass two equals range pass and uh, compare compare pass one and uh, pass two. Um, if they are Id identical, so so I just convert um. Uh, we just okay. uh, so how much yeah. do you think this will increase our time complexity yeah so let's say so it increases time complexity to the all m times n and to square Yeah, because each shape will compile with the <laughs> and and for each one, since it needed to ro rotate, so I needed to consider rotation into that. Uh, yeah, so and rotation. I think it, right, line fifty four fifty five. It's range shape, not path. Path is just one shape. yeah yeah it's one shape yeah yeah shape one shape shape two yeah you got it yeah so rotate shape um rotate shape probably yeah so um, for each one rotate shape yeah Rotate shape. Mm. If our one is one node, I think I just still like this. It's a uh, m times n uh, to an m times n square. So, well, okay. so that makes sense. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. yeah. Let me suggest something. What if we? Okay. What if 
when entering the shape in the map for every shape we got all the four rotations and check if none of them are in the map we insert all four then the next time mm -hmm. we get any shape that's similar to any of the rotations we we'll find that rotation already in the map right mm -hmm. Oh, I see. Yeah, that makes what sense. What is the time complexity of that? Yeah. So in that case, um, yeah. So, so we just uh, beside that, we just need to add the rotations. Rotations is uh, is uh, four times. Yeah, I think it's just the four times n times n. So that still makes o n n. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. I think we are done with this question. I'll paste a very small question. We'll quickly okay. discuss this. Okay. Because we don't have time to go through all of it, but yeah, do feel okay. We can at least take a look at this question. Mm -hmm. Come to line sixty-eight. I am pasting the question. No code is necessary. Let's just discuss it quickly. Yeah, sure. Uh, Give an array of unical non-negative integers. Find the small. I need the non. In this case, not a thing present in the array. Okay. Oh. Okay. Okay. Now, well, next thing. Found the smallest non negative individuals not present. That into a way. Okay, okay, okay. I understand. So for all, uh, so that array contains all the non-negative in integers. There are some integers are there already. Find the missing one, the 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 smallest, the missing one in the array. Um, okay. Yeah, I see that. So the first question. I'll ask her, look, look, look at this array. Uh, it's not a sort, sorted, right? It's not sorted. This is in this example, it's just sorted, but it may not be sorted. Okay. okay. Uh, so if like, if we have a array like zero, zero, one, so the answer should be two, right? Correct. Okay. Okay. So uh, how can we do that? So yes. Yeah, so um, let me think how to do that. Uh, okay. I think I have no question for the problem itself. I'm thinking about uh, an algorithm to do that. Um, Okay, so mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so okay, so should I do uh, let me give uh, me they're all non negative. And we just need to find one integer that's not present. Okay. 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 Um, okay. So my thought is like like this. I go through. I go go through this. Array from the first one, 
um, before I read the first one, I assume the answer is zero. Okay. Um, until uh, and and uh, I have another hash map, hash map to save the integer I have visited already. So if I encounter one, I save it into the hash map. map. So means okay. one. It's found it already. Then uh, I assume the 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 smallest one, the non-empty one, is zero. Then until I encounter the one, okay. I not then I assume the next uh, smallest the non-negative integer is two. Until I encounter two, okay. Then I still increase this number, okay. I don't encounter this number, um. Yeah, then I find a four. What does okay. the hash map contain? Uh, the hash map contains all the many all the element I have visited so far. Visited so far, okay. Yeah. So why are you tracking those? Uh, because I want to check the because um, uh, uh, let let's say. Since this array is not so so sorted, so for example, let's say it's like this. Yeah. So yeah, I assume the first the I I assume the answer is one. So yeah. I I encountered so okay. Then I encounter two. Okay, I still assume the answer is one. Okay, and then I encounter one. I said, okay, one is not possible. Let me try two. Okay, then I encounter two. I say, okay, two is not impossible. I, I I try three. Then I can look back into this hash map. You see, okay, the three is not there. So my uh, assumption is true. So that I can, yeah. Yeah, so, so that I can. So you have the array, but you're only. So how are you searching whether answer is present in the array or not? You search one by one. No, I just use this hash map, right? So, so the let's say the hash map, but like initially the hash map has no values. You're only putting the value of answer in it, right? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I. So Initially, like... let's assume this is the array. This is the array. Initially, the hash map is nothing. You're only putting the values of uh, answer. Or are you putting the values of the array in the hash map? I didn't get that. Yes. Yeah, so, so every time I encounter one, so it, it, it's actually just a hash set. Okay. So Hash set. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. It's hash test. Then I just keep adding the element I encountered so far. Yeah. So, so, so which element? So, the the one you get in the array or the answer element? Like uh, where you and where do you encounter these elements? You're saying you you add all the elements you encounter, but encounter where? Yeah. Doing what? So, I will do. So I encounter one. So, so okay. So, so every time, so I start with assume this number is a zero. So zero. I encounter yeah one, and yeah I say one into this hash set. Okay. Okay. Then, you say zero okay. and hash set. Yeah. So until until I. I got so remove yeah. that for a second. I'm removing that. Remove yeah. that. We only have this. We have an answer zero. We have an array and we have a hash set. Now tell me yeah. how do you start? Yeah. So I encounter. So I found a one. So I I, I found a zero. I know zero is impossible. 
So I try the first. How do you know zero I, is impossible? Because I just encountered it, right? So, so. So you search to the array and find if zero is there or not. No, I, I just, uh, interact this array just once. It's from the beginning, so I start from the zero. So yeah, and and I also. Found a one. I I I know. I, I found a zero. I know zero is impossible. So I, I also check the hash set to see if the hash set contains zero. Okay. Then if neither of them. So if either of them, I found that the identical value, either the car, current value. Okay. Or I think I'm getting a little confused. We have a few minutes. Can you code it out? I think I'll understand that better then. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Find, um, find, uh, small east long neck number. Okay. So numbers. Okay. Okay. So I say uh, I will have a, a set, okay? So set make a map um, integer, okay? It's a set, but uh, it's still implemented uh, by a hash map, okay? That's so fine. Look for numbers uh, in count. Assume it is zero. Okay, we're going to return the assume eventually. So, okay, if numbers equals uh, assume or set, let's say contains, uh, let's just use uh, this. Contains uh, a string a string plus plus and the set the put um, uh, okay I mixed uh, Java with the go but a string. Uh, Number equals two. Okay, okay, so if number equals obviously, okay, if Okay, give me a second. Okay. Okay, let's do a quick dry run. Let's see. Mm -hmm. okay. Zero to one. What do you think the answer would be? The answer would be so I start so so let me go through it. So in that case, talk about what the answer should be. What do you think uh, the should it be three? Should be three. Now yeah. let's do a quick dry run. Yeah. Assume. Assume. Start with the zero. So the set. Start with the empty. So okay. Uh, so zero comes in. So, okay, we first encounter the number equals zero. So then assume will be one, the set will be one. Okay, Yeah. okay. So the second comes in. So, okay, um, so the does set not. Will, yeah, will be right. two. Okay, the one comes in. Okay, so 
contains and then you add one as well yeah so but the loop break okay. yeah 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 yeah. To one, right. yeah but the loop breaks and yeah. then you end up returning two which is not the answer yeah. okay yeah sure okay okay if for set contains assume assume plus plus yeah i think that's should that be the fixed it's the hmm. yeah so in that case we could just remove that assume plus plus in the beginning all we need to do is put everything in the hash set traverse through assume doing a quick plus plus if the set has that number if not you just break and return yeah that's for the war was the case uh... yeah but the overall time complexity is not going to change at all yeah um, yeah that's the idea i have so far um, okay i think yeah this makes sense huh? now okay so i think we are done with this part now let me uh -huh. write down something ah one thing that you should expect in any find view as well they yeah. will be taking notes so right now we can't see each other in most interviews you would be able to see the interviewer and you would see them looking down or typing them on the keyboard mm -hmm. you should expect that mm -hmm. taking yeah, notes yeah, yeah. most interviews yeah so in that case uh what should i pay pay attention if the cameras okay. are, uh, are on should i have some eye contact even when i am typing so no okay so that's just for you that it's okay if they are not looking at you uh -huh. so that's just for you don't worry okay. too much about eye contact etc keep focusing on your question but uh -huh. if let's say you see them looking down or something don't worry mm -hmm. about it that's all. okay okay okay, okay. now okay. Uh, i'll go through some of the feedback so mm -hmm. you were able to code out most of it which was great space and time complexity was correct you were able mm -hmm. to come up with a algorithm for the first question quickly in a sense within time uh, you need one minor hint but other than that it was fine mm -hmm. uh, modularity in code was decent uh, mm -hmm. two issues one that you used ij which is not really the best variable to use see if you use okay. row call anything like that oh. ij really don't paint a good picture so that's okay. just for your reference no um, call is better than IJ. Okay. Yeah, and the second is you missed the shape re-referencing. That was a pretty big part of the code, which had to be pointed out. Again, okay. so that was like it wasn't a minor thing. Minor things are still fine, and this was not a big thing too, but it wasn't a minor thing because that's half okay. the question. You mean during this shape converting? Yeah, the converge convert shape to key. Ah. You just yeah. did an FMT dot sprint F, which was not. You missed that we had to convert first into an R path. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So rotation I mean, system, yeah. your approach was workable. You were able to come up with an approach that was great. Mm -hmm. Might be a little inefficient, but at least it worked, and that was enough. Uh -huh. Second question, we saw a number of bugs, so that was a bit of a problem. But okay. given that we were on a very limited time budget, it's fine. But mm -hmm. in future, especially that this is not a difficult question. The first was a much more difficult question that mm -hmm. you were able to come up with. This, on the mm -hmm. other hand, was not. So the mm -hmm. expectation here was that you, sh before saying that this would work or something, my suggestion is okay. dry run on a few of your own test cases. Okay. So. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, sure, and, sure. Yeah, yeah, of course. That would actually help you out quite a bit. Oh, Other than that, okay. it was good. So okay. I'm basing the whole thing on the first question on the extension because that's what we did in the majority of time. Based on mm -hmm. that, you would pass. 
but given that okay. you are applying for a senior they would ask a few follow ups here and there they might okay. twist the question a little ask how okay. this would change that if okay. some things to keep in consideration are concurrency mm-hmm. if i have to scale mm-hmm. this and mm-hmm. make it concurrent how do you handle that multiple threads going mm-hmm. into convert pass to key or mm-hmm. multi threading yeah. to ease the pain of solving this big problem how do you handle yeah. something like that how yeah. do you make it yeah. edge safe things like that and they would keep coming in if this was in a distributed system how yeah. do you handle yeah. that? would you use a different yeah. cache how do you handle cache misses mm-hmm. cache hits things mm-hmm. like that yeah yeah of they course might, yeah so not, but yeah. you should know that there is a possibility that they might that's all i'm saying mm-hmm. okay yeah 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 i noted that yeah it, it it's not threat safe sometimes so you yeah so mm, yeah yeah okay I, I will definitely consider it that. Thanks for your coaching. Sure. I think that's all the feedback I have for you. Anything else you want to ask me? Um, yeah, so I mean during, so of course this uh, first question, so I, will, I never encountered this before, so I kind of, yeah, feel kind of overwhelming at, <laughs> at the very beginning. So, uh, so, during the real interview, so if this is a new question, the interviewer will you need some hint from the from the interviewer. So is that cause some negative impact or or so what is the expectation from the interviewer? Okay. So, so so first thing is you should expect that there is a decent chance the question you encounter is an unknown question. Okay. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So in most okay. cases of Meta Amazon, sometimes you might encounter a similar question that you have some idea about, but there is a mm-hmm. chance you might encounter a question you haven't really seen before. So that is mm-hmm. part and parcel of the job. You should expect mm-hmm. that it would be new. Okay. Now, depending, given that this is a, I know this is a bit of a difficult question. Mm-hmm. I, minor hints are okay. If I okay. have to give a major hint, that's a bad sign. Okay. Especially at an okay. E5, like at an L6. Basically at L5, a minor hint or two are fine. So as okay. I said, like if you break down problems, like the breaking down is something I expect you to come up with. That, okay, mm-hmm. we have to first calculate shapes, get the shape, and the second part is deduplicating them. Then maybe mm-hmm. we can discuss a little on deduplication. I can suggest a few things. I suggested okay. this re-referencing. This much minor hint for my question, I expect okay. But if okay. I have to point out how to store the uh, how to store the shape itself, or mm-hmm. how you would go about deduplifying it in the first place, mm-hmm. if I have to tell that completely then I expect okay. a perfectly perfect code. Okay. Then if I have I to see. point out even a minor, because like I provided the algorithm then, then okay. at least you should be able to code it out without any hints, any problems at all. So okay. that's how I look at it. So minor okay. hints you should uh, consider. Basically, go through the question, keep thinking, and mm-hmm. think out loud like you were doing right now. So if you're going too much in the wrong direction, most likely the interviewer themselves will point it out that, hey, you have gone too far off. Mm -hmm. That approach wouldn't work. Mm -hmm. The minor hints are not considered problematic, but major hints, especially at an E5, will cause you some problems. Okay. 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 So for the hint you, you you, you gave to me, so especially for how to uh, re- represent the shape by minus the relative po- point from the fir- first node. Does it count a minor a hint? That's a minor a hint. Because you are already thinking about using DFS to accomplish that. I just said that we could do it after getting the whole shape. So it was merely okay. a change in uh, 
process you are going to do the same thing you had already arrived at the fact that uh, line 118 is the final thing that we had to get to okay so i just suggested that rather than messing our dfs you could have mm -hmm. done that i've had people mm -hmm. do that with the same mm -hmm. question mm -hmm. but you could just re-reference the whole thing that also works that's all okay yeah that counts okay. as a minor hint okay oh, okay i see okay and okay but uh, minor hint is still worse than no no hint right no hint is obviously the best i won't deny that but don't put too much stock in if you can get it in no hands or something like that. So, and generally the interviewer will only interfere when you have gone too far off. Where, okay. like, I see that, okay, that's just mm -hmm. not going to pan out in any direction. Mm -hmm. So it's best mm -hmm. to keep confirming that I'm thinking this. I think that this is okay. Go through some cases in your mind to see that if it actually does feel okay then confirm mm -hmm. like is it okay with you as well if it's not okay yeah. with them most likely they will point out something okay 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 so uh, yeah yeah so so sorry so it's just one final question sure. sometimes i fo yeah i fo focus on the code the quality and the modularity and also the communication between me and the interviewers so, so, sometimes I feel the time is quite limited. Should I focus on the finish or the code? Uh, should uh, uh, fo focus on the finish for, first or focus on this communication and modularity and the co uh, code uh, there more? Uh. Good question. So mm -hmm. uh, normally, and this, uh, I know this is not maybe not the answer you're looking for, but normally the expectation is both. So okay. what I'd suggest is, and uh, especially at an E6, unless it's a behavioral round or something like that, keep the intros very short. Because I've done this as well, when I've interviewed, as in me as an interviewee, taking the long approach for an introduction actually reduces my time for the interview because that doesn't add any value. Not the interviewer. The interviewer is not looking for your introduction whatsoever doesn't matter because that's not how they are going to grade you it has no bearing on your overall grading so cut short all the initial chit chat uh, give a very 60 to 90 second introduction and then directly jump into the problem mm -hmm. so you have time for communication in problem you should be definitely clarifying first then communicating this is what i think if they say it then you should be able to code it out quickly now mm -hmm. In most cases, especially at knee 5 I would expect, people do expect both. That mm -hmm. you should be able to communicate and code mm -hmm. it out. Worst okay. case scenario, and this mm -hmm. is like worst case, mm -hmm. where you don't have time or something has gone sort of thing. And interviewer mm -hmm. also has an eye at the clock. So they know, okay, what can be done, what can't be done. So my suggestion then would be keep coding while talking about what you're coding okay. and try to see if you can finish the code okay. if you can finish the code you can actually talk about at the end take 30 to 60 seconds and just quickly explain the code in 60 seconds quickly mm -hmm. sort of say that okay i'm doing this broad level mm -hmm. i'm doing this i'm checking the edge conditions if this has already been done then i'm returning if the path then i'm appending the uh, this as an integer array to the path, making sure that we don't visit this again, going off in all eight directions. So this took less than 30 seconds to explain your entire visited function. Okay. So during the code, should I code it loudly or should I just don't talk too much? Because sometimes I realize when I code it vocally, I may say something that doesn't make a sentence. So is that Something it's, I fine. Should, uh, it's fine. Doesn't really matter. Okay. Most interviews don't care that much. It's fine if you talk out loud. If you don't talk out loud, if you don't talk out loud, then you need to talk out loud after you have coded. So okay. in that case, I would expect that you code really, really fast. It can't be that okay. you code 
at the same speed while talking out loud and not talking out loud so okay. if you are explaining okay. while you are coding that's fine i understood while you were coding but if you are mm-hmm. not that's also fine if you reserve enough mm-hmm. time so that mm-hmm. i can understand post you've coded okay 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 so overall do you think i have a chance to pass uh, yeah. based on my if my on performance front, today yeah yeah you would oh oh i see okay okay that's good start. Uh, okay thank you because i'm a uh, quick thing i'm only basing it on the first question and the question we did within one hour so the mm-hmm. second one went over one hour i'm not uh, counting that at all because okay. that was not a good showing and i'm attributing that to our lack of time because we had limited time we didn't give mm-hmm. it proper thought so i'm ignoring mm-hmm. it okay 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 good good okay thank you thank you yeah yeah thank you for your opinion that's much that's very valuable yeah okay i will provide a detailed feedback as well with most of my uh, notes i think we'll both get a chance to provide feedback as well so please if you feel anything i could do better please okay. do i'm always okay. looking for sure sure okay sure okay thank you thank you have a good luck for your interview yeah have a good rest of the day <laughs> you too okay yeah. bye bye bye